Welcome back. She lousy Florida gardener here. We're gonna talk about bird bass today. A lot of gardeners and a lot of people who aren't gardeners, they go off and they see a lot of work, birds at a nature trail walk or somewhere like that, and they get interested in attracting them to the yard. So they start hanging some bird feeders, putting out a few things. So one of the common things they put out is bird bass. Not a lot of people really do a lot of research into the actual setting up of the bird bath. Number one, you need to do the location where it needs to be for the type of birds you're trying to attract. So you need to research that. Today's video is gonna be on, in general, set up a bird baths here in the Panhandle of Florida, Big Bend area, for the birds that I'm trying to attract. I get a lot of birds, and when I post those photos on some of the groups as birding, they ask me how I get so many photos on bird baths, and it's got to do with the way that I have them set up, not just the location. I'm gonna show you here how most bird baths look in yard, and then I'm gonna show you a setup that I have done. I actually am cleaning out my bird bass today. So it's a good opportunity for me to show you how to set one up. So let's first go over here and I'm gonna show you the different types. Most common types of bird bass you're gonna see in a yard are gonna be these ornamental glass bird bass, these plastic bird bass, concrete bird bass, different heights of bird bass. My preference in a bird bath is concrete. I don't have a lot of concrete because I got some big pines and limbs fall. Therefore, I buy a lot of the cheaper ones. Right there is what I just said, my preference. That's where we kind of get caught up. You also have to think about the bird's preference. What does he like? So if you don't have it set up right, he ain't gonna come. So most of what you'll see around my place is a mix of whatever's the cheapest because I can make them work. I'm going to bring you in here and show you the typical bird bass, show you a few things that cause problems, and then I'm going to show you how to overcome that. So let's come up here and look at these. These glass bird baths, they're really popular. Have a lot of ornamental design in them. You can see this in here has some type of hummingbird or something to that effect. These plastic ones, you see these a lot at places like Walmart, do it best hardware stores, places like that, garden centers. Really nice. I like those. I use a lot of those pine limb falls on it and shatters it. I hadn't lost a whole lot. These concrete ones, minus the coffee cup. This is a double tiered. They make them in many different designs. This is a glass one, another glass decorative. It sits on a metal stand. All of these are nice and they can be utilized if they're set up right. Each one of these that I've chosen here has its flaws. I'm gonna point out a few of those flaws to you. These nice glass ones, slick lip, very thin lip, hard for a bird to hold on to that, rather deep. You may get some big birds in it, but you're not gonna get a little bird that's gonna sit on it for very long. I'm gonna show you how to fix that. It's concrete one, nice bird bath, sets way too low, predators can get to it. So you need to be sure that you put this in a location that is near some quick and close over overbrush, not so close that predators can hide in it, but close enough that birds feel comfortable they can get away from a predator. These plastic ones, these are really nice. About the right depth when you do them and set them up like I'm gonna show you today. Edges on them are nice and rounded, so a little bit smaller bird could get on it. That other glass one, same problem. So uh, with the technique I'm gonna show you today, you'll be able to get more little birds. You'll be able to see more variety of birds and you'll be able to see birds stay longer and bathe and play when you sit and watch. So in a few couple, couple months right here, I'm gonna hang some cameras specifically on my bird bath to get some more photos to be able to show. So thinking about setting up a channel with just those in my channel, a little playlist. So let's go over here now. I got red birds all around me right now that I'm disturbing. Let's go over here and I'll show you one that I've already just reset up and show you the basic principles. And then I'll walk you through how to set up a couple of these and how I actually choose a location. Not really choose a location, but how I set up the location. Let's step over there. Now this bird bath I'm fixing to show you that's set up. I have a lot of these around. I like these, they're cheap. If they get broke, I can afford to replace them. This top screws off. You fill the bottom part up with sand that gives it some weight. Let me move you in here and show you what I've done. You're trying to mimic nature. Birds drink out of water puddles and different things in the woods. Now if I get you down here, you can, you can see 
I have a thin ridge here that runs all the way across that smaller birds can stand on, a rock that sunk in that gravel, and then on each side, I have a deeper channel that's dug into that. This way here, you can get your bigger birds that have a place that they can get up and stand out of the water, or they can get down in the water and bathe. Your smaller birds can get and stand here and be comfortable. I use pea gravel, you can use river stone or whatever you choose, but this makes a difference. It gives the birds some, some footing. It's more like a natural stream. People overthink this. It, they get out of line with it. They go to, oh, you gotta do this and that. And most of that is not accurate. I mean, birds drink out of water puddles in the woods and anything they can find that has moisture. As far as cleaning and scrubbing, I see everybody talking about using this and using that, and that's all great. I don't do that. I use a wet rag and water once a year to twice a year. Other than that, what I'll do is I'll come in here with a sprayer on a hose and it'll be set on shower and I'll just lightly spray it where it stirs up what's on the surface and then I'll let it sit there and run until it overflows and gets clear water. I'll do that and then about once a month, I'll turn that sprayer on a jet and it'll stir all that up. I'll move just the big rock out of it and it'll stir all that up and then I'll let that water run till it runs off of it. It runs clear. Then I'll reshape my rock with my hand, put my big rock back in, and I'll go again. About twice a year, I'll dump this rock out in a bucket. I'll let this rock sit over to the side and dry. Generally when it dries, anything that builds up on it is gonna flake off and you can rinse it off and I'll wipe out the pan and then I'll put everything back. Now, if you're doing it like I'm telling you by coming out here, when you do it and putting it in and rinsing it, every day with fresh water every other day you won't have a lot of algae growth and build up what you need to be looking for too when you're coming and filling this up is bird activity it's not going to be immediate after you first set it up it's going to take a little time but you want to look in the water before you start rinsing it see if you see any bird droppings or seed gatherings so let's step back over there and i'm going to talk to you just a minute about location two factors you should be thinking about when it location and water supply. You need your waters to where that you can get a hose to them. That makes it much more convenient. You're more apt to make sure that you're keeping fresh, clean water in them. Mine are situated around where I do my cuttings and my plant, potting up of plants because I, I check on them daily, which means I can get out there in the morning or any time before I go to work or a few minutes after work. Everything's set up right there. I can water my plants and I can also, so location. You need them feet, them waters. You need those waters where you can put fresh water in them without a whole lot of trouble. That's what's gonna make it the easiest of maintenance. Number two is location consideration for the bird. Yeah, you're trying to fight leaves and things, but you don't wanna set your feeder right out in the sun. The water gets too hot. The bird ain't gonna wanna sit there for very long. I mean, think about it. If you went down there at the buffet and they set you out in the parking lot at a table in the sun, how long are you gonna sit there before you get up and leave? So you gotta consider those types of things. You want your feeder set up around some brush and different things, but not so close that a predator can get to the bird before he can get away. You wanna keep that into consideration. You wanna set that, that water up to where that you can have a little bit of opening around it, but to where there's some plants and things that birds can hide in if predators get to them. Around my house, that is a major problem. I have cats. Cats like birds, cats don't mind. I have to keep that into consideration. So those are all things that you want to think about. The gravel that I showed you that I used in that is available at most hardware stores. It's anywhere from $3 to $6 a bag for the Outer River Stone or whatever you choose to get. Rinse it good. Don't get all crazy if there's a little bit of blur in it once you get it in there. Rinse it the best you can. So you can let that water flood out and keep in mind when everybody's telling you about the different things. You do have to keep some clean water, but you ain't got to go find sterilizer. And They drink out of water puddles in the woods and rivers. So uh, that's pretty much it. If you do those simple things, you'll, you'll find that you'll get a more variety of birds. Research individual birds and their watering habits. You may have to set some stuff up in a different way if you're wanting them birds. Environment, that's what you're trying to do. You want it to be pleasurable for you to look at but you also want it to be comfortable for them birds to come, otherwise you're just staring at that empty bird water. I'm gonna take you over here to the bench and show you how I rinse my rock and set up a basic bird bath. 
nothing real complicated, but just simple. You're gonna need a bag of gravel or pebble or whatever you decide to use in your birth ba bur bird bath. I choose gravel because of the fact if it gets knocked over by a limb and spills on the ground, gravel it not seem to be near as hard or, or flinging out of a lawnmower if you got it out in the grass is what a pebble or a stone does. And I also like the look of it. Then you're gonna need some either assorted size rocks or chunks of concrete or pieces of block. Uh, You'll see me use a lot of flint. My grandson likes to pick up flint and rocks and brings over to us. Uh, all kind of different rocks, it doesn't matter. Just something big that you can stick down in your gravel. You're gonna need either a big bucket or an outdoor gardening sink or a utility trailer like I have here. And you're gonna need a strainer. I use, I've always got flower pots laying around, hanging pots. I have some of these that have a little root filter in the bottom. I just turn it up like that. So since we're doing a lot today, I'm gonna just take my bag of stone and pour it out into my buggy. Then I'll spread it out in the bottom of my bucket or my trailer. Now you can see it's old dirty orange color. Can you see that? We're gonna rinse it. And we're gonna let this bucket just fill up with water and then we're gonna scoop out with our other piece and final rinse it before we put it in. You see how red that was a while ago. As it gets to rinse and you can see the colors in it. These glass bird baths, they're pretty. You'll see a few in my yard where I found deals. I would not choose a glass bird bath based on just looks because in the end, all that's gonna be covered up anyway. I buy whatever's the cheapest. So you can see now we got our cart full of water. You can see all the mud and dirt that's coming off that rock. Now we're just gonna take our strainer, colander, pan, bucket with holes, whatever you have. We're gonna reach down in there and scoop us up some of that rock. You see that water coming out the bottom? Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your Water hose and spray put it on wet. And you're gonna keep rinsing that and stirring it around until it's relatively clear. Get it as clear as you can. It ain't gotta be perfect. So the one we're gonna set up now is this glass feeder. I've rinsed my rocket, I've chose my location, everything's set up. I'm gonna bring you in here and just show you real quick how to do it. So we got our bucket of gravel that we rinsed. And as big as this feeder is, we're gonna put two rocks in it. We're gonna just dump our gravel out. You could go ahead and put your water in here and I would strongly suggest that because then as you're shaping your gravel, you could see where how high you needed it in different places. Just for the purpose of this video, so you can see what I'm doing, I'm not gonna put water in there because it's gonna cloud up a little bit from the off of these rocks. Look at the different colors that's in this gravel too. That's what I like about that. You can see some whites and some kind of opaque, some browns and tans. Just gives it a good natural feel. Now I like to first just take my gravel that I got in my bowl and spread it out. Just spread you out a good thin coat of it. As you can see here, I'm gonna need some more gravel, so I'm gonna walk over and get that. So on these glass bowls, I like to pull it up pretty close to the edges and then kind of dampen that off, give it a little ridge. So if they wanna stand on the edge of the water, they got a little spot there. Gravel's cheap, so use as much as you gotta use. And see when you put them rocks down in there, it gives it some stability. If you see any cracks or anything like that, just pack some rocks on it where it don't move. You want it to feel firm. We'll pull up a little ridge right there in the center. Now, 
this part here, depending on how well you rinse your rocks, as to how well you're gonna have to, how long you're gonna have to let the water run. Hmm. And as you can tell, I did not do a very good job, so my water is a little bit muddy. That's not going to matter. I'm going to, because I water mine every day. I'll get it flooded enough right here with the water that it'll run off and be clear. And what don't is settle. And what don't settle, over time will settle. Don't beat yourself up. Like I say, just keep in mind when you read all these crazy things. Yeah, they need clean water, but they also drink out of mud holes. Don't get too overcomplicated about that. When you're watering, if you got a decent sized rock too, when you don't want to disturb your gravel and you're just topping it off and letting it flow over, you can let it spray on that rock. You just do that until it's clear. Now once you get your water clear, get all the sediment out of it. Like I say, you can avoid a lot of that based on how you rinse it in the beginning. You want to make sure that these rocks that you put in are sitting up by the surface. If you knocked any of your pebble out from the way you liked it, reshape it now. And just remember to try to keep them a little edge right there, especially on these glass ones, on the edges. So they got them a place to stand in shallow top water. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I hope this has helped you with your bird waters. These go along nice with your bird feeders. Don't put them right under your feeders, put them near. Observe them over time after you set them up. Within a month or so right there, you should be seeing some signs whenever you're cleaning that bird feeder, of some seed or droppings in there. If not, after about a month, month and a half, give it one more month. If you still don't see that, relocate your feeder somewhere. Birds love that, they, they go along nicely and they're gonna bring in birds that wouldn't normally eat on your feeders, but who would on your bird baths if you have them set up right. So I hope this has helped you and I appreciate y'all joining me. I'll see you in the next one.